we're back. And today we're bringing the heat for all you 2J, 1J loving Lexus Toyota dudes with the IS200 and or 300 steering angle kit. Yes, yes, yes. We finally got a chance to rip apart the front end and see why the lock sucked so bad on this chassis. And as we did, found out some efficiencies and a way to make it not suck. Now we run through why the lock sucked and what sweet, sweet features we pumped into this kit on the product page on our website. There, we jump into all the nitty gritty details, the do's, the don'ts, and obviously any FAQs people seem to be having and the ASM, and we update that very page the second we get updates, so go there if you need anything. We can now dive into the actual install. Zap the side bolt that secures the ball joint slash tie rod end assembly on one side along with the ball joint and nut at the bottom, then the other side bolt and obviously remove said bolts. If you've just purchased a transmission jack and want to show it off to all your friends, now's the time to do so. Jack the assembly up and out, which would leave you with just the ball joint tie rod assembly pickup exposed, which is much easier to work on and avoids the assembly hanging on for dear life. Loosen the tie rod and nut and another red hot steaming pro tip, but if you use the same socket that you used to loosen it, you can put it on the top with the nut still threaded on and give that an old fashioned smack, which will unseat the taper. Do that, then screw the tie rod end off in a respectable fashion. Being as we loosen the ball joint nut earlier, you can try your fancy new trick on this also, which is to put a socket on the bottom and smack that B back to where it came from, rendering that ball joint taper loose. Wind the bottom ball joint nut off its thread, obviously, and remove said ball joint slash tie rod end assembly and get it out of the way. While we are removing the OEM bits, head on over to the OEM tie rod end. Hold the tie rod end with one spanner and crack the locking nut loose with the other, then go ahead and wind the tie rod end off the inner tie rod. Now I know we can be dramatic sometimes, but in this case, it's somewhat warranted as yes, there are permanent modifications required to your tie rod end pickup. You will 100% need to cut the tie rod end pickup off your OEM assembly as you can see we've marked out on the screen here as the OEM tie rod end pickup kind of gets in the way and ruins all of the fun. So go ahead and cut that ish off like we've done performing said surgery with us conveniently showing one we prepared earlier that's cut already. Now go ahead and get your fancy new dog bone and put that on the bench with the locators facing downwards. Get your fresh new haircut OEM ball joint assembly, locate the bolt holes like we're showing on the screen, and then go over to the car so we can throw this on. Now before we do anything else, we need to point out if you have your OEM dust shield fitted, it does need to be trimmed like we're showing on the bench where these two lines are in order to give this newfound setup the clearance it deserves and needs. Our IS didn't have it fitted at the time and we don't plan on running one anyway. Anywho, throw said newfound dog bone on the OEM ball joint onto the knuckle, lining up the bolt hole locators whilst winding in the supplied hardware on one side as well as the other side. If your friends have left you and you don't want to use your fancy transmission jack, you can simply bust out a bicep curl and lift that assembly up off the transmission jack and onto the FLCA. Go ahead and sling the bottom nut on the ball joint, zapping that down, and we'll hit this guy with the left right goodnight torque spec shortly. Then head to the tie rod end and wind that down the inner tie rod. Now speaking of the tie rod, let's explore the world of Ackerman right now. So if you were to run said insert towards the inside of the car, so towards the engine, you will have more Ackerman, meaning more lead wheel and less trailing wheel, aka more scrub. If you flip the adjuster 180 degrees, pointing outwards towards the wheel of the car, you'll end up with less Ackerman and closer to an even leading and trailing, making less scrub for a faster car whilst in drift. And now for the lock stop. Now you may have noticed that the lock stop is bigger on one side than the other, and this is done because there are two fixed positions to stop your steering lock at, with the shorter side facing your FLCA giving you more lock and the longer side facing your LCA giving you less lock as it's stopping sooner. Now for the dudes that have extended FLCAs, we've got a handy tip for you. You simply need to take the lock stops from left side and use it on the right side and vice versa like we're showing here on the screen. This allows the lock stop to be in the right position as you have the extended FLCAs so you would need them to be positioned differently compared to having the OEM FLCA. The same rules apply with one side being longer and stopping sooner offering less lock and the other side being shorter stopping later offering more lock. 
Now while we're here in our adjustment segment and doing all things adjustment, let's explore the world of bump steer adjustment. First and foremost though, something that cannot be forgotten, you need to run the supplied washer under the bolt head like we're showing you on the screen before putting the tapered insert on the bottom. Do not raw dog that bolt straight into the tapered insert. You will regret it and instantly have a bad time. Anywho, slide the other tapered insert on top as well as the bump steer spacers and install that into our nice new dog bone. Now there are four different types of bump steer settings you can choose from and to know which is best would be basing it off of your ride height. So if you were sitting at the OEM ride height, the best bump steer setting for you is going to be to stack all the spacers on the bottom. Now if you were lowered 25 millimeters from the OEM height, then you would have only one lonesome spacer up top and the rest on the bottom. Now if you were a bad boy and lowered yourself 50 whole millimeters, then you would end up with two up top and the rest on the bottom. And lastly, for the coolest dudes on the block, 75 millimeters or more from OEM, and you're gonna stack all three spacers up top. Anywho, once you've interrogated every single free AI tool online for which bump steer and Ackerman position is the best, go ahead and throw the tie rod through the guts of all this goodness, all whilst winding the nut on top. Then before tightening that main bolt, you're gonna want to install the little bolt that goes into the lock stop. Make sure the lock stop is lined up to stop where you need it. Then tighten that little guy down to the specs shown here on the screen. Now head to the main bolt, hold on one side, and then go ahead and tighten and torque those hard decisions and goodness down to the specs shown on the screen. Then the two main guys that run through the ball joint assembly on each side, torquing them to the specs shown on the screen. Scoot on to the ball joint at the bottom, torquing that sucker to the specs laid out here as well. Spin the torque wrench on your finger before blowing the steam off old girl and putting her back in the toolbox for next time. Now head on over to your tie rod extender. You're gonna wanna screw that in or out until the wheels are pointing forward, making sure you have a minimum of 15 millimeters for thread overlap on both sides of the extender. And this is very important, my guy. So important that we put it on the freaking sticky label so you wouldn't forget. Once you've eyeballed the wheels straight as your straight eyeballs can do, hold the extender in the middle, tighten the outside locking nut, then the inside locking nut, whilst immediately after that, calling an alignment shop and booking that ish in ASAP. Lastly, check the steering by turning it side to side and flex to your buddies that are still possibly meandering about your jaw-dropping transmission jack you wasted your money on and showing them the angle you can now hit with this new kit. Go you. Not only angle guys, but you can flex your faster steering, bump steer and roll center correction and you know what? Just rip your shirt off and flex anyway because you're done my guy. You're gonna love it. This kit will bring your IS into the future and make it feel alive again. We're looking forward to see more ISs out there shredding. The world needs it. Speaking of things the world needs, it's these guys. They throw these videos together for you to live, laugh, drift together, or something like that. And if you don't know what you're doing, please reach out to a professional that can and will install these for you for a price, or hey, reach out to us and we'll get you as much help as possible. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and DK with another one of the world's best goddamn how-to videos. Catch you on the flip side. Peace.